Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out the K65 RGB gaming keyboard from Corsair today, and they sent us to the show for us to take a look at. We've looked at a lot of their gaming mice, and now we're moving into the keyboards now, and I love this keyboard, and I'll tell you why. It's got these cherry mechanical switches that just sound great. It's got nice key travel. Uh, I'm a real typing nerd. I took typing in high school like for two semesters and I love to, I don't really love to type, but when I have to type, I like to type quickly and I like to have a keyboard that's comfortable to use. And this is really good, not only as a gaming keyboard, but as a keyboard that you can type on. Uh, it really reminds me of some of these awesome uh, computer keyboards from the 80s, like the IBM keyboard and the Apple keyboards that were just so awesome. They had that you know, really high quality, heavy feel. This really replicates a lot of that. So this is uh, pretty nice. Now what it's missing though, of course, is the number pad. Uh, and uh, you can get like a fuller version with that if you wish. But uh, they designed this one to be kind of a portable uh, device that gamers may want to take with them, assuming that a lot of gamers are not doing a lot of spreadsheets, although I'm sure a lot of us do. So uh, if you want something with the number pad, you can get that uh, pretty much in the same configuration, just a little bit longer. But if something you're looking for is compact for gaming, this would uh, certainly foot the, the, foot the bill. Uh, it has a, a little wrist uh, rest here, so you can uh, get some comfort there. This comes off if you wish. A nice long braided cable too. It's a cloth braided cable, so it's got about five or six feet of length on it. The keyboard has like a processor on it, an ARM processor, uh, has all the lighting and all this other stuff, so it might need a little bit more power than your computer might provide. So it's got a plug here with two uh, USB plugs on the end of it, but I found most modern PCs should provide uh, the one amp of USB power that uh, the keyboard requires. The only other com uh, control on here beyond all the keys, of course, uh, is a little switch here that you can uh, kind of change the polling ratio. So right now it's set to uh, report back to the computer every millisecond, but you can switch it to one, two, four, or eight. And uh, there's also a BIOS mode if for some reason your computer is having some trouble talking to it. It can kind of behave like an old school keyboard uh, if that's what you need it to do. So uh, pretty complete. Uh, just as a keyboard, it's nice, but it's got a ton of controls. It actually uses the same software that uh, some of these gaming mice from Corsair we've been looking at use. So you can use one piece of software uh, to configure both the keyboard and the mouse and let's take a look at that right now. All right, we're going to start with the lighting and this is a very complex uh, configuration that you can do on the lighting. So every key uh, can have its own light and you can also set effects on individual keys or groups of keys. Uh, you name it, you can do it. Now the only problem is, is that you kind of start with a blank slate. So they don't really give you uh, any templates to work from. So you kind of have to figure it out as you go. And I really haven't yet mastered all of the effects that you can do with this uh, because the gaming mice were a little bit easier to configure. They only have four lights. This one's got a light for every single key. So it's really a lot more to kind of get to, get to learn as you go. Uh, but what you can do is you can again impact an individual key here so I can select the right key and maybe make that yellow if I want to do that. Uh, or I could select a whole group of keys and build a group around it or just apply something to them directly. Uh, you can also uh, set those groups up and save them. So as you can see, I have uh, the left side of the keyboard here and the right side of the keyboard here, and I can apply uh, different settings to those. You also can do some cool lighting effects like this little wave thing where you can click a, a key here and it'll kind of ripple across the rest of the keyboard, uh, which is pretty neat. It took me a while to figure out even how to do this. And it was something that I think they, sh again, they should really give you like a template or something to start with so you can kind of see how everything works. You can download templates from uh, their website. They have a lot of uh, folks in their community who are collaborating on uh, different lighting examples on the keyboard. So I suppose you could get something to uh, kind of speed up your learning process a little bit. But I really wanted to go in cold and to see how, uh, how to work it. So some of the lighting effects you can configure in here. So for example, I can go in and just uh, maybe edit uh, one of these here and you can kind of see uh, you got to set the intensity, all this stuff you have to like set yourself, uh, get it set up, how many, uh, you know, how, how many lights per second you want the velocity to be, the duration of the effect as you're typing it, uh, whether or not a key will start it or end it or whatever. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of detail uh, that you can go into with this thing. I haven't even mastered it yet, so I'm not even going to do a tutorial or how I did it. I just kind of poked around until I got it to do something tonight. Uh, so I think you're going to need to spend some time to learn it. I would guess, you know, again, go to the message boards, uh, download some examples and take a look at it. Now the cool thing though is that uh, because this is running the same software that their mice use, that uh, any macro that you set up on the mouse uh, will also work on the keyboard. So you saw in my other reviews that we did of the uh, RGB mice, uh, we did some things like you know keyboard uh, shortcuts by clicking a mouse button. You can kind of do the same thing here. So I can go over to assignments. I've got my little list of stuff here. I've got a little uh, text string here that I'm going to drag over to the scroll lock key. And we'll go over, hit OK to confirm that. Uh, and now the scroll lock key is no longer a scroll lock key. It is going to, uh, when I hit the key here, uh, type in a bunch of text. I finally found a use for the scroll lock key. <laughs> so you can see how uh, that works just by uh, hitting the key there. Uh, but again, you can also, because it is using the same uh, thing as the mice, we could also configure that scroll lock key perhaps 
uh, to uh, do something in uh, a game. So I'm going to move this uh, over here now, and uh, this will be something we'll run in Half-Life 2. So uh, let's pull up Half-Life 2, and we'll see if it can repeat the same macro that we did with the mouse a few weeks ago. All right, here we are in Half-Life 2. We've got our little gun here selected, but if we want to switch to the crowbar, normally the process would be, I guess you could use the mouse wheel, or you could hit uh, the one key and then click the mouse button to switch and then switch back. But what we did here is we mapped a macro to the scroll lock key, the very same macro we actually have uh, on this gaming mouse that we got from Corsair a little while ago. Uh, same exact command, I hit that key and it will automatically type the uh, number one and then click a mouse button, but that's coming in through the keyboard. And the keyboard does have its own onboard memory, so it'll retain everything you program it to do. Uh, so you can unplug it and move it to a different computer, or if you don't want that software staying resident in memory all the time, you can basically load in all your settings, uh, kill the software out completely out of memory, and uh, the keyboard will continue to operate uh, the way you told it to. Uh, you also have some settings here that you can apply into profiles, just like the mice, so you can set uh, you know, a specific profile here, so you can see it changed the lighting when I moved from one to the other. Uh, and that profile will retain not only the lighting, but all the assignments of macros and everything else. So you can very quickly uh, switch between different uh, macro and lighting modes depending on uh, the usage. So a lot of cool stuff that you can uh, configure this to do. Again, it would have been really nice to kind of get some templates to help with that onboarding procedure, because it is a lot to learn. A lot more than the mouse, even though it's running the same software. And again, there's just a lot more to look at here with the keyboard. But uh, that said, they can easily fix that by providing some templates. The hardware is excellent, uh, very high quality. I love these keys a lot uh, because I haven't uh, had a nice mechanical keyboard in some time and they uh, were kind of hard to find for a while. So it's good that the gaming community has demanded higher precision and has brought this uh, technology back because this is what a computer keyboard should be like. So that is the Corsair K65 keyboard and this is Lon Seib and thanks for watching.